it's Mike from Party for Craft back again with the X Tool P2 laser. We're going to be running some more tests on it. Yesterday I did my first cut on it without using the certified materials, without looking up any settings, just estimating what the settings should be just to see how easy it is to use and it came out great. Uh, go back and watch that previous video and at the end I show you a picture of the little earring design that I engraved and cut out. And it came out great for guessing at the settings and using the software for the first time and the laser for the very first time. Today I'm going to be doing a speed test. First I'm going to run and engrave with the built-in settings that X-Tool recommends for their certified wood. And then I'm just going to do one at the highest engraved speed that it will go to. Um, I've done that before with the Glowforge, the GYK Cloud, and my Chinese laser at home. And I did a side-by-side-by-side -side -side video. Um, the X-Tool P2 claims to be able to engrave at 600 millimeters per second, which is faster than any of my lasers. But there are two things that you have to keep in mind with that. First of all, acceleration is more important than top speed. Any car can go 140 miles an hour, but a Corvette can get there faster. My Chinese laser can only go 500 millimeters per second. GYK Cloud can go 600, but my home laser is way faster because it could stop from 600 and get back up to 600 way faster. And it has to start, stop, start, stop, wants for each back and forth going across an engrave and that time adds up. So even though my top speed is slower, my engraves are way faster. So we'll see on the P2 how fast the acceleration is and I'll put together another side by side by side by side video of the four lasers all going as fast as they possibly can and engraving something. Um, I'll also put a ruler in there and do a calculation to see exactly how fast it goes. I found that the Glowforge goes at about 140. They use their own units and they don't do millimeters per second. The GYK Cloud was pretty close to the five, 600 range uh, that they're talking about. I found it closer to 500 than 600, but 500 is still impressive for a consumer desktop laser like this. And so we'll see how the X-Tool P2 does. All right, let's give this a shot. So I pulled up the X-Tool Creative Space, the XCS. There was an update overnight that I just installed today. There's also a new firmware version for the laser as well, so I'm going to go ahead and update that now. Most of the stuff in the Xtool Creative Suite that was updated was back-end stuff that uh, we might not even, even notice a whole lot here. So uh, we'll see if anything changed since the last video, which I filmed yesterday. All right, that took a couple minutes. It disconnected, reconnected, like turned itself off and on a couple times, but maybe two or three minutes and now the firmware update is done. So as you can see, it now has the, the camera view up there and, and I could choose from this list, three millimeter basswood plywood. It has the thickness in there. It already does the settings. I shouldn't need the autofocus. And it already has that in there. So now I'm going to load the SVG file in and I thought open project would do that but it turns out that's only for extra creative space projects to import SVG files you do import image and so I know which file I'm going to use to test this it's just some baseball seams with a logo in the middle and it's it's mostly an engraved so drag it over here on the space so that you can see it and now I can tell it the black layer, I'll set that to engrave. And it already has the setting in there 10% power, 200 millimeter per second speed. And then I'll cut it out. So the red layer, I'll set as cut. And it does that at 100% power and 30 millimeter per second speed. I'm going to give it a shot just using the standards uh, settings that it provides. I don't want to waste too much material, so I'll put this up here in the corner. Put it pretty close so we can also see how the alignment works out. And then I'm going to start this project. That's it, so click start. Gives me a preview. Click start again, so you can see that was different than, than yesterday. It's ready to go. And now I just hit the blue button.
finished one of the seams. It's going to work on the logo now. It's going to work on the other seams first. It's looking good so far. The smoke is clearing well. The air assist seems to be working. This basswood seems to be very low smoke. Let's see how it does when it cuts it. Right, finished with the seams. bit more smoke now that it's cutting. And it's all done. And it took about, the time disappeared now, but it took about 2 minutes and 45 seconds to do that. I'll load the same file into the Glowforge software, and I don't even have to run it. The Glowforge software tells you how long the job is going to take. So there are 2 minutes and 54 seconds, including the cool down time. Let's open it up and see how it looks. That looks pretty clean. I accidentally set the Angels logo to score, but it did it just fine. Pops right out as it should. The, the edges are nice and caramel brown. They're not really dark black or charred or anything. So pretty impressed with those settings. All right, I turned the Glowforge on. Now I'm gonna load this design into the Glowforge software and it will allow me to see how long this job would take in the Glowforge. I don't think either the GYKey Cloud nor the X-Tool give you a preview of how much time it's going to take, um, but the, the Glowforge does as long as you have your machine turned on. So I just turned it on over there so that we can get an estimate. I'll drag it over here on the bed, wait for it to s stop doing all of its startup procedure, and then we'll give it a shot. So I loaded the file and the Glowforge did not see the word angels as score, so it wouldn't have been a fair comparison to do it that way. And I wish my cheap K40 laser, the K40 Whisper software, had a feature that I could click a button and if I made any changes to the original SVG file, with one click of the button it would reload that file. And I wish Glowforge and Xtool and GYKey would add that feature so it's not delete it and reload the whole thing with just one button click. You could refresh the changes that you made to that file. So I just went in here and changed that to color blue. I wasn't really sure that I resaved it, so went back out, made sure to save it, click upload, choose that one. I'm going to set this to score, and now it's ready to do a comparison and see how much time it's going to take on the Glowforge. It's auto-focusing now. I don't know why that takes so long. It doesn't take as long on the X-Tool P2. The GYKey doesn't really truly do autofocus. If you use their wood, it knows the thickness of the wood and does it for you. But if you don't, you have to measure the thickness of the wood with calipers, subtract it from 17, type it in and click a button. And that's not autofocus at all. The X-Tool P2 and the Glowforge do true one click. It comes over and measures the thickness of your wood. And I've been satisfied with both of them. They've always done a, a good job. So there it is. The Glowforge time for this file would be 5 minutes and 36 seconds. Significantly more than the Xtool P2, um, partially because the more watts you have, the faster you can cut. And so I'm imagining that the cut portion of this file was the part that was significantly faster on the Xtool. 
All right, so there's a speed comparison. Now I'm gonna put the X tool back on and I'm going to put it at full speed and then with a ruler in there, measure how fast it's actually going. All right, so here's where I am now. I put a 10 inch mark from here to here on the board and I'm going to have it engrave 10 inch rectangle so I can type in the size there and then just align it here with those marks and I'll use those marks uh, I'll put it up here so I can see the marks better and I'll use those as my reference point aligned pretty well I'll come over here and set it to engrave and I'm just going to turn the speed all the way up. I don't care what this looks like, but I'll turn the power up just so you can see what happens if I do 600, 100, and engrave it. But I'm just doing this to see how fast it engraves. I don't care what it looks like, but it will be interesting to, to see how it comes out engraving at 600 millimeters per second. That's all I need to do now. I'm going to record it from above, and I will use that to uh, in order to get a time, and then I can use the... 10 inches divided by time to see how long that takes and I could do it like side by side with the other lasers uh, so you can see how it goes. So I'll click start. Click start again. Immediately it's ready to go. So I'm going to hold this up here so that I can time. And here we go. Okay, so here it is, it's done, and that's what it looks like when you engrave at 600 millimeters per second and 100%. It has some darkness to it, but if you were just engraving the clear coat off of something that you're going to paint, or you just needed to engrave the white off of a white board to get the two different colors, or engrave the coating off of a piece of metal, you might be able to go at 600 millimeters per second. But you engrave wood, if you want a nice consistent engrave, you have to go slowly. So I will take this video home and I will analyze it and see how fast that was. But for now, uh, very happy. The software is working well. The laser is working well. So far, it's living up to uh, all of the promises that it's made. We'll see if the speed lives up to that promise as well. And then we'll test a whole bunch more promises in the days to come.